Welcome to Real Flix Reviews. We're like a book club for people late reading. This month's theme is childhood favorites. So Ryan picked the movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, made in 1954, a Disney classic. And we bring you movie news and the other program. This week we have Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, Ryan yeah. Preston. And the old guy's here. <laughs> So who has the description of this week's show? I'll do it. Of this week's show? Okay. Of this week's uh, movie, I Oh, guess. the movie. Okay. Yeah, that'll work. I was going to say a bunch of idiots are talking. A uh, ship sent to investigate right. a wave of mysterious sinkings encounters the advance... They had no apostrophe there. That's the way they did it. <laughs> encounters the advanced submarine, the Nautilus, commanded by Captain, Captain Nemo. Nemo. Hey, another excellent description by IMDb. Oh, seriously, sure, so they had no comment there. I saw that. <laughs> Your brain's supposed to put it in there, you know. We are, well, ta- we are you know, talking about James. You guys write these things aren't quite as eloquent as Jules Byrne, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, that's actually something I had to mention to my wife because she actually watched this with me. And she goes, this movie's slow. I'm like, it's based on a book. Written in and the 18th, back 18th in the century. 50s, they actually try to stick as close to the book as they could. They didn't yeah, really yeah. cut much out. Yeah, no. They, did. Well, they, they did a really good job. only changed one thing as far as I noticed, uh, aside from a lot of the you know beautiful description that Jules Verne had, even though it was originally written in French. Yeah. You know, we'll forgive that. Um, was the, 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 the powering of the ship, I think, was originally like electric or some kind of coal electric. Um, and they changed it to presumably nuclear power, essentially, because this movie was made <clears throat> 10 years after the nuclear bomb. Yeah. Which, which so it's, just, it's kind of this new technology they had to kind of play around with. And I actually thought that was actually perfect. I thought Me too. That, that doing that. And the other thing is, say, this being 1954, there weren't a whole lot from what I remember reading, a lot of color movies. No. This was, in the same time frame, you had a lot of black and white because it was cheap. This was a cine, cinemascope, one of, the, one of the first early ones, if I remember correctly. So. But there was a lot of firsts in this one, especially with the underwater sequences. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it first, for something entirely different, and then because it looks so good, they're like, we need a movie that features these awesome underwater shots. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's such a great job of making the uh, the the scuba set. I don't know yeah. what you want to call it. The costume diving, diving suits. Yeah, the diving suits. Those guys are you know, amazing. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, and you know, there's a regular snorkel and everything under all this stuff. The way the guy made it, it was just amazing. And, and uh, just the entire interior of the uh, Nautilus was something incredible. For for the longest time in the world, they had uh, Captain Nemo's uh, organ. Yes. Uh, yeah. at, uh, at one of the Disneyland. Yes, they did. Until yeah. just recently when there was a remodel. I, I love which the... is a shame that they got rid of it. I don't quite understand. Yeah, nobody really knows twenty thousand leagues under the sea anymore. Well now yeah. we you know, we can do the math pretty quick that twenty thousand leagues is something like eighty thousand miles. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I, I do I love the fact this is like Victoria era era steampunk. Yeah. Like the, the whole look of the ship was like yeah. one of the reasons I always loved this was it feels evil or feels badass or, you know, I just, I well, love Nemo, yeah. everything about that. Nemo's uh, bedroom, shall we call it, uh, you know, his with his room. organ and uh, he's their playing. Yeah, that was a little over the top, you know, the velvet drapes. And <laughs> it was a I, little bit of, you know, 1880 horror house look. I, yeah. I, I, thought that I, actually learned I can't say my shit would look any different. <laughs> there well, you go. I actually <laughs> thought that was was perfect because I always, I always thought the character came across as, he like he was the god of the underwater universe, so he needed this grand stateroom to sure, declare his sure. well, he stroke his ego. Hugh Hefner, if you notice the, the smoking jacket, that's right. <laughs> Hefner, the you know, I I like uh, Ned Land's uh, genius of creating his own little guitar or banjo yes, to play in yes, the other yes. room while the guy's and, playing and his organ. I'd like to take a moment and acknowledge the craftsmanship and fine to you don't just make an instrument out of things laying around I there's know. Some, some math that went that. Oh, yeah. like yeah. a turtle shell yeah he was he was really good at, at making such a fine instrument as Ryan's well, trying to well, point was, out was, I'll tell you what I prison, think so what else did he have to we, do we can all we can all agree that the sets were just incredible yeah I yeah. mean you know the craftsmanship that went into it way before computers ever came around is just awesome when you look at it and I also have to mention something about those natives man those natives were ready to roll, dude. <laughs> as soon as they found yeah. out that he's there, they're coming out with boats. We're getting oh, you. They were ready to roll. They're like, my, dude, food. Well, you know, and, and you think about it. Quickly. 
Yes. yes. My, my favorite thing on IMDb was talked about how they wrote funny things on their forehead. That one that said, I ate, I eat at Joe's. You know, the other person's right. comment was, I ate Joe. Right, right. So I, I thought that was hilarious. Well, look how high tech it was showing those lightning bolts coming out of yeah. the back, coming at these that guys. Was that really, was super high tech. That was really you know? high tech, especially yeah. for the way they did it for back then. I I'm mean, that sure. was. Years before the lightning fingers of uh, of the emperor, right? Yeah. So exactly. Did they? I don't remember. Did anybody find out the way they did it? Because like twenty I think, years. Did they draw it over the, the actual film, I or don't did they know. do it like a cartoon? They were just geniuses. I, I think they no did idea. it more like cartoon style. That's kind of what it seemed yeah. to me. It didn't seem so much like they actually drew it onto the actual. They were probably. Uh, um, they probably could have. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Because I was figuring what they did is they they, they projected it on something that over. So I want to get into right. the. I want to get did. actually into yeah. the story of this. The the reason why the professor was even going out there, and even a date according to MarineBio.com, is that there is estimated of fifty to eighty percent of all life of the Earth is still in the ocean, mm -hmm. the undiscovered. And that less than 10% of the space of the ocean has been mapped. So it really is the undiscovered country. It's like 70% 70, 70 of the Earth's surface is water. Yeah. And we really haven't scratched any of it. Why do you think it's in so the easy entire to hide, hide a submarine? And the average depth but of the ocean is 3,795 miles. That's the average depth. That's not the deepest point. That's the just average. the average. That's all over, yeah. And I so think, I, I love the I love the way that they portray this in the beginning of we don't know what's out in the ocean type thing mm -hmm. and we have we're gonna go out and explore it we're gonna find out. Yeah. Well, that's what James Cameron's trying to do right now. While yeah. Trying to convince everybody. No, no, no. Forget about space. There's this whole entire universe here that we well, still have yes. about uh, that. not that far from us. That, I'm that very have, well informed of what South Park thinks of it. That have <laughs> blue aliens. <laughs> The but, uh, dragons. Yeah, but, but I. Um, it, go on. Unfortunately, there is no megalodon anymore. There's nothing incredibly <laughs> large, you know, uh, that far down. There is no giant squid. You never yeah, know. That kind of stuff's all, all near the surface. So we're not going to find anything, you know, that cool. I, you, you know, I. You I, never know. I, you, you never really know. And I was going well, to talk no about. There's no food down there, for Christ's sake. If it's for Dude, anything large. I. No I there could be something awesome down there, well, like full-on food, like what they were eating, dude. Giant Except for like actual real. like yeah. the, the, crazy hamburgers and the, the giant squids are real, <laughs> yeah. but to get back, well, they to, are, but they're not that deep. No, to get to get back to the, they, the movie, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait. I want to correct that. Uh, they're deep enough that they're hard to find. True. All right. I mean, Very it's they're, they're still looking for you know a really decent live specimen. They've been yeah. they, to yeah, this day had a really good one at all. No, everything they get usually is washed up on shore. Right. I, so I, I do want to say that I think my, because I was really looking at the characters between Land, the Professor, and I never caught his assistant's name. Did you? Peter uh, Laurie, you mean? Yeah, Peter yeah, Laurie. Peter Laurie's character. Peter Laurie uh, was, was conce conceal. 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 Yeah. Well, I thought that the conceal. interesting thing is that the, the Professor's thirst for knowledge mm -hmm. blinded him to the madness of Nemo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I thought it was Land's character. His his character was blinded by the fact he wanted to get out, but he wanted to escape with all the goodies. Yeah. The, I, the I always was bothered by that part of the movie where he's like, dude, there's so much gold out there. We just need food. <laughs> dude! <laughs> <laughs> no, that was my thought. Dude! Like, well, how do you buy supplies? I mean, you got to do something. Well, you they, be some they showed bartering. you. They go out into the ocean <coughs> and they harvest and farm the food. Well, what about all of Nemo's, like, drapery? They got to purchase that. No, they just killed Good people. Point. I mean, it's the stuff that he stole from the, his captors that were on that island. Yeah, along with oh, the yeah. submarine. Right. And, and the, 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 one, the one that I thought was interesting, that was hard to nail down, was the Peter Lor, Lorre's character was the... Because he was kind of caught between the two. He was he was really a character with no direction, so he kind of did what... It was a very Land odd did. role. Yeah, it was a very odd role for Peter Lorre. He even admitted yeah. it was an odd yeah. role yeah, for him. Yeah, it because, is. Yeah, you know. I mean, if you looked at his career, he spent a long time being Mr. Moto for yeah, a long time. Yeah, he's the time. monster. I mean, yeah. he's yeah. always been the bad guy. Yeah. Right. Uh, it, it seemed to me with his character, it, um, it was a purely about being the apprentice of, of the, the professor and learning off of this great man and everything, but then through Ned's sort of, you know, bug in his ear, started to kind of turn him and get him to think like, oh, I need to protect the professor from himself and started to go towards him. I don't think his intentions were ever malicious right? Uh, no. or, or anywhere near as, uh, you know, 
nefarious is, is trying to just get all the gold. Well, no, but, I think I think Ned's I think Ned was malicious. I think I think uh, Peter Peter Lore's character was really I think I, I do think he saw the fact the professor was starting to you know that this invention was better than lives and. So I think he, I think he was really sucked in to yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I like Ned. I think Ned's, uh, excuse me, I think the Peter Lorre character is was probably the most innocent out of all of them. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. You know, we were we were talking about Kirk Douglas and and uh, just a little bit before we went on the air here, and James was talking about how buff he was and everything. And yeah. what, one of the things I want to make sure we you know we continue our discussion on was the fact that he was wanted to consider himself as an action hero. He was the man. He wanted to have the women. He wanted to have the fights, you know. Yeah. And, uh, he went into his career. He wanted to make sure he was the biggest guy on a horseback. He was always, you know, a winner. And um, the contract was even written and changed uh, that scene where he comes out with the two women. Uh, into on his arm. Yeah, yeah, both on his arm into that square where they're, they're making the scare stories of all these ships going out and we need sailors and no, don't go and that whole thing. And, you know, so it was pretty cool. I, you know, it's, he was the real Even though deal, he got knocked know? out pretty quickly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. We but still, he was, you know. On crutch. <laughs> he was one of those guys, you know, you get John Wayne and you, you got all the, you know, you know, all the other big action stars. But I think Kirk Douglas Steve is Steve McQueen. A, and... uh, yeah. Well, but Steve McQueen's a little... Almost a generation after Kirk Douglas and John yeah. Wayne and, and that, yeah. but but yeah. you know you, 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 it's easy to forget Kirk Douglas and all the movies he's done and all you know he was pretty pretty big time actor. Yeah, he, he was yeah. a big actor. And, I mean, and this was him in his heyday doing a, a pretty big kind of character. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely, and and to give about his character, the, the old guy's still around. He had a major like stroke and everything. I mean, he's still with us. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I love... We think of Michael Douglas as old now. Yeah, exactly. yeah, uh, ninety-seven. Yeah. Ninety-seven. Yeah. So, well, like I said, I wow. do. I love the. I actually love the song in this movie. It was the one thing I, I remembered from it more Dude, than anything. Everybody whistled that for like three days, right? Yeah. Yeah, I will admit, huh? Yeah, yeah and the days of catchy tunes. Catchy, yes. You know, that's a, that's actually another thing I wanted to mention was that this is back when not only did you have to be able to be that tough guy and be, be that womanizer, cowboy. but you had to be able to sing in yeah. movies. Yep. You sing had to be able to sing and dance. dance. Yep. Yeah. That yeah. was one of the things that uh, a lot of acting studios. That's what they expect you to do. You come out, you deliver your line, and then you have a little song and dance to go along with it. That's right. It's true. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. the idea of the, the, the triple threat thing yeah. that you don't hear of anymore because everybody sort of did it so shitty for so long that it's not a big deal anymore. Well, now and they can auto-tune everybody like Britney yeah, Spears. You had those three things. You were the biggest thing in the world. Yeah, and that's actually one of the things I have a lot of respect for for the actors who just did the new Les Miserables is a lot of those guys don't sing and dance and they stepped out of their comfort zone right. and did it they did yep. but anyways back to this movie i i was actually impressed by the way he was able to sing and dance and have fun and be goofy especially when he's doing it with the seal mm -hmm. yeah, the seal scene was great did you read the read the little everybody had to have a sardine in their pockets no. so yeah. every time the the seal did something right they always had to keep and they said they all smelled like sardines every one of them there's always sardines in their pockets it, it was funny i was was thinking about since you're thinking about uh, talking about kirk douglas's goofiness i actually think he was one of the that character is one of the saving graces because otherwise that movie would have had a very serious overtone and you got tidbits of very goofiness that kind of took you out of having to focus so much so i think you got a chance to relax have fun then go back to the serious bits i think uh ned and and peter laurie's character really just gave you somebody to relate to in the whole situation oh, yeah, yeah yeah with the whole with captain nemo playing such a heavy heavy dude right with you know these crazy i mean it was like a like a passing sentence that he mentioned that it was his wife and daughter who got murdered you know along with a bunch of other people yeah you know on that island um and i mean all of a sudden i mean you know like it's a line that i didn't even notice when i was younger but i was like oh shit man i'd be pretty bummed out with society too i think mm -hmm. uh but ned and, and peter lori really kind of give this outside perspective where you, you're that guy. You would be Ned in that situation. Like, hold on a second. This is all a little too much. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's that's where I think the, the analytical gold. mind of the professor really kind of 
really tied in with with Nemo's madness, you know, because like, look at all this stuff. This is that's why I think they played such a they played off very well to each other. You know, when I was watching the movie, I was trying to think of who else could have played this role but Kirk Douglas. I mean, there's something at about the, the guy. Yeah, at the time. I mean, you know, you couldn't stick a John Wayne in it. I mean, you no, couldn't. No way. You know, he wouldn't no be way. Able to fit down the hallway. Yeah. He was a white guy. I mean, you know, it, think about it. I mean, it was like a role that was really perfect for his. Uh, ability, singing, yeah. Yeah. Ability, dancing, yeah. fighting, the whole bit. I mean, yeah, I'm sure there could have been something. He just looks really good in that that longshoreman outfit. He does. You know? right? He does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, John on that dude. Man, I'll when, tell you. The, the other interesting thing is, I wonder when people see this, they actually get what Ned's character really was. He was a spearman on a uh, on a whaler. Right. Hey, and, the harpooner. Yeah, the harpooner. Actually, harpooner. Sorry. Go ahead. Thank, no, no, it was harpooner. Thank you. I was yeah. going to say, I wonder how many kids. Or younger people watch this today and, and really get what he is. Probably none of them. Probably none of them know what they are. Thank they, you, Greenpeace, you jerks. They never showed yeah, them. Those kids read like Moby Dick still, but I, I doubt it. But here, here's my question. Um, a humpback whale pops right up out of the sea, and he just stares at it like, oh, look at the nice fish. But, bro, you're, you're a master harpooner. How about you get a little practice in before you're supposed to kill a monster? <laughs> I, don't you know think, I, mean? I, I don't think they were in for a they sleigh need, ride. They needed a little blubber to keep those other lanes yeah. going. Yeah, some, really. I mean, you know, whale chops on this like, grill. Hey, I just hired this guy on sort of, sort of sight unseen. How about I test? Is uh, hey, go, go kill that whale. And well, I, I actually, actually well, really wasn't he are, kidnapped because if you notice yeah, during the Shanghai. beginning, during the beginning, those guys yeah. pick him up and he was on semi, you know, semi, uh, you know, kind of in a haze, right. The other thing that the I thought term was in Shanghai. That's yeah. why you didn't go to Shanghai. Well, I thought it was interesting. So they were having long pork that night. I thought it was interesting the fact that um, there was blood in this movie, which during the 50s, we're not a lot of blood. In, in talking about the shark scene, the shark, yeah, the yeah. shark scene. Yeah, well, I was just reading that. They, and talk, about a, it they, too, so. they talk about that as a being harmless shark. Uh, it was yeah. a nurse shark. shark. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was unscripted. The whole nurse shark right. showing up. Right. This is back when 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 Disney didn't care about fuzzy creatures like knocking lemons off of lemmings off of mountains. <laughs> read about it. It happened. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, you know there was a lot of fun to this movie, especially as a kid and in. You know, even today, I think the story is one that, you know, is still a fun one for kids. I don't think it's as fast-paced as what they're used to these days. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really don't. Not, but let, let me give you a testament to, to how good I think this movie still holds up. I watched it with my girlfriend, and it took us a couple of days because we started it late. Is at she 12? It just knocked out. 13 but, and a half. Um, So uh, the next Come day, on, she's talk. like, I was like, oh, what do you want to watch? She's like, well, what's what's going on with this 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? I, I, need to, I need to find out how this thing ends. I was like, all right, we'll throw that back on. So there you go. You know, even the next day, she was still thinking like, okay, now now what's what's going on with this Nautilus thing and, and this guy's crazy plans? But, you know, she's not a kid unless you're... You I know. understand that, but he's <laughs> okay. for adult. But no, I agree, I, I, agree with, I agree with Ryan. No, that'd be, I mean, it still holds up because it still has your interest. What's going to happen yeah. next? What yeah. is the next thing? You know, and it, and it did keep your interest. And that crazy tune does stay in your head for about three days. I got to say that the one thing that Ryan really kind of made me think about is the fact for a kid, I was more interested as the story is more interesting about the story and, and really nothing more than that. And the older I get, I see the small things of the story, like the close up on Nemo to see his reaction when they rammed through one of the ships. You, you get to see the way he phrases, the way he walks. You, you really get to see his madness as it progresses. Yeah. Yeah. James Mason was was nailing this shit. Yeah. No, oh, he was. And you you get to see you get. But that to was see... kind of a lot of his roles, though. If you look at his yeah. movies, he that was kind yeah. of him. So. And and I, I like it because you also get to see because there's only three or four characters you really see during this entire movie, and you you see the characters kind of change, like Ned being you know happy go lucky guy to kind of a more serious guy who's more like let's get the hell out of here. So I, I loved that because I never noticed it as a kid. You know what's interesting to me is how would you get a whole ship full of crewmen to all say, okay, well, now Nebo is shot. Now <laughs> right? we're going to die now. Yeah, it's, that's the thing that yeah, always that bothered me. That's that, the only that thing. That still weird. bothered me to this day. I, I just my, don't think it's my like, first you know, thing let's all been, jump in the volcano. <laughs> yeah, my first thing would have been, eh, can, can, can I get voted off the submarine, please? I'm going to pretend to go down with you guys, but I'm not going in this hat show. Here. <laughs> right? Get that guy out of here. Go in uh, like, the fan, like the Phantom. Yeah, let me go shove this guy tours. in the prison cell, and uh, I'll be <laughs> taking the boat out yeah. to make sure he's uh, secure. Boy, quick, let's go. Let's go. You know, talking about 
that little that little boat that they had attached to the Nautilus. Yeah, that, that, that was way out of scale. There was a scale problem there. I really yeah, that, think, you know that. Yeah, I noticed yeah, that too. I'm yeah, like, that doesn't like, fit, and it yeah, looks like a man. bathtub. Yeah. Well, well and, and, and it's the faucet, and you know, it's it all painted to look like it's steel because it was wood. And yeah. it's just, it, that, that was the one thing that irked me a little bit was the scale of that little rowboat. You know, got, a little, got this great big but submarine. You don't want to take a steel rowboat. boat out into the ocean? No, I, <laughs> I, I, not, I, not a bathtub because that's basically what it was. I, I do think we should talk about one of the more technologically advanced things in this movie was the the giant squid fight. Yeah. Because that puppet, uh, w- reading about it, was like a couple of people, and it was that was an amazing. Amazing fight scene. Go oh, ahead, fun yeah. slapping, slapping people around with that hand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was. I actually really thought that was amazing because I also love Ned's reaction. Like, shit, why did I save him? <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes. I gotta go drink that mistake away. <laughs> and nobody ever questions where he got the boost. Yeah, I did. I'm yeah. Like, where did he get well, no, that? No, but nobody in the movie like it. Eh, oh, whatever. Well, I was taking out the specimens and drinking the alcohol. So, what did you guys think of the 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 squid fight? Because I always that, that was always one of my favorite scenes as a it kid. It was a squid fight. Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely a squid fight. Yep. Yeah. That, that's about all I can say about yeah. it too. It was a squid fight. We got it. <laughs> so did not go like. I mean, that squid. Uh, I was rooting for the squid for most of it. <laughs> Oh. Come on, Squiddy! See, kill him! Was, kill them all! Mo- if that was a modern movie, he would have chewed off Nemo's head. <laughs> yeah. Like a bad Barbie doll. I did kind of like the beak. Yeah, yeah. I like the suction cup bruises they put all over everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Feed awesome. me, Seymour. Um, so, uh, what did you give this movie, James? I think I give it a four. I think there's still a lot of classic stuff to it. Um, yeah, it's just a fun movie still. It's not one of those that blew, blew me away as a kid, but it was one that stuck out. So, Rob? Uh-oh. You know, I'm not the, uh, I've been known as the, called the Russian judge the on this thing. The Russian and, judge. Um, and I think if, if you got to remember, I mean, I was a year old when this movie came out. Well, and, and so, <laughs> it's, I don't know how much, as far as cinematography and set making and all that stuff, I talked about how well that done that was. On that part of it, um, I, I give it a five. On some of it, uh, like we talked about the scale of the, of, you know, of the little rowboat and some of the things that that would be a four. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a four overall. I think it's a great movie. It's leading to a five, but I think because of, of the few little problems, uh, I'm also gonna give it a four. I'll I agree with the uh, James and Rob. I I loved this movie as a kid. It, it, it a little scared me, and I always thought it was a, a tad bit slow paced even as a kid. But I gotta go with a four to five because this. I think it was revolutionary for a lot of it, for for a lot of the stuff he did. But it's still it's still a good movie, and I think I enjoy it more as an adult than I ever did as a kid. So definitely a four to five. So what do you give it, Ryan? Um, I, I totally agree with you, John. I I I enjoy this movie more now as an adult, especially knowing that Jules Verne wrote this shit in the 1860s. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it, it, he's been argued along with H.G. Wells as one of the Birth, uh, the, uh, the the fathers of sci-fi, right? You know, for the for the things he and he, and he never wanted to be known as like some kind of philosopher or scientist. He's like I'm a writer, you know. But yeah. he just made such isn't like it, isn't e- it? like not easy, but um, he just kind of extrapolated on where he thought the the world would be. So and did, kind of I think it's there. amazing. And it's yeah. not like submarines didn't exist. He was actually inspired by one of the first submarines that was ever built, even for just testing purposes. Right. Um, but just taking the forefront of what we know about the earth and science and things and using that to write stories. I mean, I don't know. This shit still holds up. Well, totally there, yeah. there were, there were the quasi submarines back, you know, in the revolutionary war. So yeah. it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's not a new idea. Definitely not. And I love the nuclear explosion at the end where they're kind of look at the mushing crowd like, Whoa. Right. Well, that was sort of the update of the 1950s one. Cause again, they just sort of discovered the bomb. Yeah, I, yeah, that was a little non sequitur, but I just thought I'd bring that in. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I want to let you all know that we do have a Facebook page. Do you hate us, like us? Do you okay. movie? Do you have a movie you want us to do, or a theme, or how about donating to Old Guy Tech TV so we can continue doing real flicks reviews and maybe buy us some movie passes? <laughs> or do, do, we, do you think? Yeah, we, yeah. Or do you think we suck? <laughs> let us know. We might even read you on air and mock you relentless, relentlessly. Relentless. That I promise. And. Uh, 
now we're going to talk about the Band of Brothers. So did we give it all fours? Yes. yes. Wow. And this week, uh, this week's episode seven of Band of Brothers called. Uh, anybody remember? Um, what it was called? The Breaking Point. Breaking, the breaking point. point. So. Uh, thank you. I think, thank you. Hey, you know, I, I guess it's my turn to talk about it a little bit, and I think this one, this episode, really brings the horror of war uh, to the forefront. Yes. Uh, these guys, almost to the point, even though they were in you know, Omaha and they were doing all this, almost to the point where they, this was the shit hitting the fan, right? And and so it was, uh, it, you know, it, it took a lot of, a lot of guys broke down during this yeah. period. You know, we had uh, one officer that couldn't go on after seeing all these people killed. We saw a number of characters okay. that we that we grew to like in this episode. Either die, be killed, or lose limbs. Losing limbs seemed to be a pretty popular way of kill going themselves. out. Kill themselves. Uh, kill themselves with a, you know, what an idiot. A German loot. <laughs> which Luger. were known to fire unprovoked. Not true. But, That's uh, what I've heard in the history. It, it, it's not true. Uh, you Trust know, it from should, a firearm okay. expert. Yeah. Okay? I'll go with Trust you. But, uh, not true, but it had a light trigger. Guys were used to a heavier trigger, and they were forever, you know, playing around with the damn thing. And why would you be carrying a loaded gun in, in your belt, pocket, you know, where it's going to hook on something? So um, they were more famous for jamming than they were for automatically going off. You know, guns I'd just don't do that. Say so. what I've heard in the past, but yeah, well, that's fine to be wrong. Not yeah, like some of, the, not like some of the Japanese. <laughs> but, anyway, but anyway, that's what I think this, this one really brought home. Uh, you know, it was like uh, the first sergeant was talking about when, during the first real big bombardment that was going on, he was laughing because he loved to blow things up as a child. And he had, you know, this was great and it was fun. And it was just like, wow, this is the biggest Fourth of July ever. Until when it was done and he realized how many people were killed. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah Donnie like, Wahlberg. Yeah, Don Wahlberg's part. Well, it's, to me, that was something to be, to, uh, that it was like, this is what your brain is capable of, of thinking about when you're in the worst possible situation mm -hmm. ever. And freezing, I mean, Everything yeah. around you is being just destroyed, and your brain just has to do something, even if it's just taking you back and reminding you of, of 4th of July as right. a kid. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. I it's, actually, sorry, I actually wrote in my notes. I'm not sure it would suck more getting shrapnel from the round or shrapnel from the trees. Well, it was all bad. You know, uh, uh, there's that one scene where the guy's uh, belly crawling towards the hole, and they're oh, calling him and calling him. Come, come on, come, get come, in here, yeah. get in here, hurry up! Spoosh. And then a round lands in there and destroys hole. both of them. Yeah. And then the first sergeant, as you're saying, uh, he's in another hole that got he got pulled into, and a round lands right in there. And, and he's like, that round that landed in ours was a dummy. The one that landed in yep. theirs was not. And that's the way of war. I didn't that, think you yeah. were a smoker. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be drinking and smoking at that time, yeah. even if I didn't do it. It's just like how yeah. Winters never never drank before. Jeez. But this, yeah. <laughs> the last one I mentioned was one of those episodes that really stands out to me. But this one is the pinnacle of the whole entire series is this episode. And not only that, but it shows what it took to be a leader of these men right. with Captain Spears. And when he jumps out right out and runs right across the the artillery, the whole entire infantry, it. even the Germans and, couldn't and the, believe it. He goes, to the first, you know, the Germans didn't start shooting at him at first because they couldn't believe it. <laughs> and then the amazing thing was that after he hooked up with Second Company, he, he came, came back. back. So <laughs> it's yeah. like, dude, the now, you know, so I wrote in my gonna, notes, the balls of this guy have got to be very large. Well, he was, he was, he was, he was an odd. You got to. He was an odd character. He was yeah. also an odd person. Everybody I mean, they fears talked about, the spear. They always wanted to know, where was he? He was out taking one oh. of his walks. Oh, you're talking Dyke. about Dyke. 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 No, I'm sorry. I got Dyke it was the first up. lieutenant. Dyke Dyke was but, the real but, place. That, but, yeah. but this conversation will have to wait till we do oh, okay. the, the Band of Brothers special. Just, <laughs> just, just wait till you see it. Um, sorry about that. Uh, now got we're gonna go. Got cut off. <laughs> now we're going to go in the movie news. And the first thing i got to say is Ant-Man. The Marvel movie is officially in production. Oh. And I, I, I haven't read too much of the story. I'm afraid I didn't have a whole lot of time, but I'm wondering how they're going to do this because I never thought Ant-Man was really the most exciting character in the world. No. So I have a feeling it's going to be like, Honey, I Shrunk the Kid without Rick Moranis. What do you think, Ryan? And unfortunately, it looks like Ryan's having a little bit of issues. Are you still live streaming? Ryan, do you hear me? Are you still live streaming? Yes. Yeah. Kill the stream. 
Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Cool. So, 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 oh, he's moving now. So, Ryan, what do you, uh, what do you don't think about stream? What I do you think care. about Ant Man? I mean, what do you think? How do you think it's going to turn out? Because I, I don't care about Ant Man really. Okay, so you, so you, were, I, I must have lost you in the beginning. We're talking about the new Batman Superman thing. No, no, uh, no, Ant Man. But, but it is the Ant movie Ant Man officially. Ant Man um, officially I don't got. Know, I think this would be the perfect time to do it. I mean, everybody's kind of still amazed by the way CGI is going. It's, uh, you know, if you're going to do an Ant Man movie, why not now? So you're going to have a. Because a, it's a crappy idea. Why they do an Ant Man movie? But, but, it's no but, crappier no, than ever. But they <laughs> already, but they already had <laughs> Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I mean, this is like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but people die. Rick Mor yeah. Moranis is coming back. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> That would be awesome. So I would watch that if Rick Moranis was Ant Man. Oh, totally. I would watch that. <laughs> I'm down. That. Change the whole flavor of the movie, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, have, that would have, be pretty amazing. Have a random plant alien say, "Feed me Seymour." It would be awesome. <laughs> um, the the next one bit of news is apparently Doctor Strange is not going to have an origin story. Which it's, is freaking weird, man. I can't believe that they would. Stupid. I know that everybody's probably sick to death of seeing, uh, oh, this is the first one, this is the origin story, this is the origin story, because that's sort of the way you have to do it. But what, what are they going to jump into? The Just some Sorcerer Supreme? That that's what I'm thinking. I, I'll be honest, I didn't read too much of the story. I didn't, it was kind of a last minute find, but yeah, I. It sounds like they're just going to jump into the story because... I hope they don't do a bunch of backs, you know, uh, I, flashbacks. flashbacks. I heard it oh. compared to kind of how they did Constantine, how they just threw you into it and never explained anything about them. I mean, there was a <laughs> bit of tidbits, <laughs> no but... That's a great way to ruin a series. So, because I'm, I'm hoping they do something and they do it well because Doctor Strange loves... Uh, Doctor Strange... Doctor Strange loves... Doctor Strange is literally and one how of my all-time favorite love the characters. Bomb? Yeah, he's one of my favorite characters because just of the random crap they did in the comic books. Yeah, it was it was oddly dark, man. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> him versus Dracula, him versus himself. I mean, yeah, they just right, exactly. God damn, that was so cool. It's like what the hell? <laughs> well, there you go. Now you know why the movie's being made. So I I, <laughs> I really the... love. Um, if you want to see the the origin story, there's a cartoon uh, made by Marvel called uh, about Doctor Strange. Watch that. I guarantee, if you watch it, you'll fall in love with the character because it's just a great character. Yeah, and it's yeah, dark. It's, one, it's up there with like Deadpool. Like you can't help but to love him. Except he doesn't break the third wall. <laughs> Oh, which is the greatest thing about Deadpool. Yeah. <laughs> I love, looks at the camera. Hi. So, look at, you know, it's great. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> next week's pick is the old guy and, the, um, that guy. And we're, we're all kind of wondering what, what movie he's going to do. Well, this was a, uh, this was a tough one. And, um, uh, I had a I had a bump up a, a decade from the last movie just to, <laughs> to, to get closer to I my think you youth. Get it earlier than me. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. You could have picked a non-talking movie. But I, you know, as you are all aware, I'm a big Steve McQueen fan, and uh, one of the most bitchin' movies ever made in 1968 was Bullet. It is awesome. So that's my pick, boys. Hell yeah, Rob. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in a long time. It's been a while. I, I can't wait. Better hold up. Uh, I, I haven't I, seen it for so at least you, ten years. Well, all I know is when I saw it in the movies, it was awesome. So, are, so are, I'm looking forward to seeing it again. Are we going to dedicate this uh, this uh, next episode to to him since you almost killed him when you were younger? Yes. Well, I've already shared my Steve <laughs> McQueen running him that's over story. Why, that's why I, I shared it. Um, You're gonna want me to share it again, right? No, I just figured I would. Well, you so know. I'm the only one that's gotten this close to Stephen Queen. Let's put it that way. And well, I'll never get yeah. that close no, to him unless no. I dig him up. No. Um, You're gonna cut he away. Died way too young. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I gave the movie 2000 Leagues Under the Sea a four. James gave it a four. Ryan gave it a four, and the old guy gave it a four. Next week, uh, next week's episode of Band of Brothers is episode number eight. And we're doing Steve McQueen's classic, Bullet. Yep. And as always, we'll see you next week. Goodbye.